All right, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, and fellow fished accomplices, good morning and welcome back to fishing. So it is my last day of summer break right now. It is Labor Day 2023, and we're about to see if we can get on some serious fishing action, or at least some moderate fishing action. Uh, I figured I'd do the grind one more time and wake up as early as uh, reasonably necessary to try and get on some action. Uh, if you've been keeping up with the videos, I'm just coming off of my Montauk trip. I actually cut it a little bit short for a number of reasons. Not that I didn't want to fish, trust me I did, but I didn't want to fish so much that I'd sit through hours of Labor Day traffic. So I decided to just do uh, the two days, the Friday and the Saturday of Labor Day weekend and cut out on Sunday. Um, beautiful conditions, but again, just couldn't put myself through sitting through hours of traffic coming back. So decided I'd take it easy yesterday on Sunday uh, and today give it one last shot in the morning on the western sound. We're just going to be fishing close to home. Um, and could be look, this could look like a lot of different things. Um, one thing I'd really be interested in is if some gator bluefish showed up. Uh, a couple, or last week actually, very brief evening session. I cut it a few times, and some big bluefish did show up. Missed that hook set, but we got something good. Could be a bass, but I doubt it. Oh, you gotta be a little fish. Big gator. Big gator. Fouled. It's the way we like it, nice easy on hook. Additionally, I even got into some bass, though I didn't land any, but I had one snap me off. It felt decent, reasonably sized, uh, but my line just got so frayed up from the bluefish that it was not meant to be. But I want to get out early to see if we can put that bite to good use. Bass, potentially bluefish, and if that doesn't work out, we'll stay in for a couple hours and see if we can do some bottom jigging for, I don't know, fluke, sea bass, weak fish. Whatever's around. It's gonna be a beautiful day wind-wise, like nothing. Um, so I'm hoping we can put at least one last good summer session video together for you. And that is what I am going to do. And you know how it's going to be, it's true. We're about to get some fishing. Wait for it. Accomplished. All right, it is crack of dawn. Gonna do things right in this last weekday off that I have. Though it might as well be a weekend because it is a big weekend right now. And yeah, beautiful conditions. It's glass out there. Uh, we're going to start things off seeing if there's any bass around and inevitably bluefish too. Uh, and if that doesn't pan out by about sunrise, we're going to start jigging. We might go a little deeper today because uh, there's no forecast at all for wind. All right. I got a feeling right now something's in the air. It's going to be good today. Just a, a hunch. But we got 72 degree water temps. Tide is in like the middle of the outgoing phase. Uh, it is a full moon, I think. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more tidal movement. Montauk, it's a bit of an issue, but here will be appreciated. Um, and while we're here, just let me take a moment to thank all of you that have been watching the videos all summer. It means a lot to me. Uh, all the generally kind comments and positive feedback. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate each and every one of you uh, for watching and sticking it out and i hope to only bring you more in the future so hopefully this will be a good one for you got a great seltzer lined up if uh nothing else for this session so get ready for that 
All right, this is more or less where I was getting them last time. Not marking much, but that doesn't mean they're not here. So let's do a little jigging to start. Got a four and a half inch Elias Shad purple chartreuse color. Threw a little proke here on there. And we're gonna see if anyone is hungry and wants an easy meal. Actually marking some life, that's good. Tendonitis is still crushing my elbow. It's one of the reasons I'm actually kind of looking forward to going back to work is just to, oh yeah, there's fish here. Take a break, let my elbows recoup. Yeah, there's definitely fish here. Try jigging first and then uh, we'll keep trolling a shot, not trolling, uh, casting a shot. 100% fish here. Got a three quarter ounce SNS jig head on here, which I got out in Montauk. Definitely resupplied on my essentials, which was great. Some good looking marks here. Loosen that drag from fluke fishing. Good head shakes. Yeah, it's not a small guy. Not a small guy. That is what we're talking about, folks. Oh yeah, we're on now. That is not a baby. This is what I'm talking about. This is why we came back home early. Couldn't make the fluke happen, but we're happy to get some consolation stripers. It's been a while. Oh, that's a nice fish. Very nice fish. It's above slot, above the new slot. Nice fish. Very nice. Mmm. That is how we start, folks. Woo! <laughs> Very nice bass. Get an official, unofficial measure of my very janky setup. It's uh about 36 incher. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's uh, get a little revive. He didn't fight that long. Get another. 36 inch bass to start things off. Not too shabby, he's biting down, but. There it goes. Cool. All right, first fish, and it's a solid one, so let's see if we can keep it up while the sun is uh, still below the horizon. Definitely a nice start to uh, this month of September. Still marking fish, so let's see if we can cast one up. Smacked. Let's try it down. Took it right down. Yeah, so quickly after getting that fish, I decided to, you know, go for the cast presentation. I did have one good smack, uh, but after that, it, the bite just almost completely shut down uh, once that sun got above the horizon. One thing I will notice is that the tide really started to slow down 
um, just as the sun rose. So I think it was a couple things coming together at once. Um, there were still fish around, but they were just very, very finicky, and they weren't really looking to hit the, the casting presentation, at least in this particular spot. Um, but I kept trying. I threw basically the entire tackle box in terms of soft plastic, and nothing was really sticking. All right, these bass are definitely starting to thin out now that the sunrise is coming, but we'll try for another, like, 30-ish minutes on these fish if they're still around. And then after that, we'll start jigging if there's no other reason to check out this particular area. Try casting at them, try jigging at them, try even trolling them. I think I might have just got in right when the bite started to dwindle. If I got in maybe an hour earlier, maybe it would have been a different story. Still marking a few fish, it looks like, but nothing like before. Intense rainbow action over there. I'm hoping that's a good omen for what's about to happen right now. Yeah, so that bite this morning was pretty short-lived. Uh, I think I got in just as it was dwindling out. And I was still marking those fish, but I just could not make them bite. Uh, maybe if I had some like legitimate bait, I don't know, but uh, tide is pretty much slack right now. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go out deep and just try some rock piles and see if I can pull some fish off that. And depending on how that goes, once the tide starts moving, maybe move back inshore and see if we can pull some fish closer to launch. Try something, because it is just dead low slack tide right now. All right, we're just rock hopping, going over chunky isolated pieces of bottom and some deepish water doesn't get super deep in this part of the sound i think the most i've ever marked is around 50 feet which isn't shallow but it's certainly not deep but it should be deep enough to hold some interesting stuff so see if anything's around of course i accidentally turned off my fish finder when i meant to hit the waypoint but in the meantime let's just blind jig we just got bit by something probably porgies Yeah, so as I said in the previous clip, um, this particular area I'm in is a bit deeper than where, than where I started. Um, it's at least, I want to say, 35 to 40 feet deep, uh, quite a bit offshore, and I'm fishing an isolated piece of structure. I'm not quite sure if it's a rock or something else, but it's very obvious once you go over it. Um, and I just kept working this area because I kept getting a few, you know, grabs each time I went over and eventually I did connect with a fairly decent fluke. And the only reason I'm telling you about it and not showing you is because my GoPro battery basically died mid-clip and the footage got totally scrapped. But uh, I did want to keep this footage because uh, I want to show what happened shortly afterwards. So let's get right into that. Well, glad we stuck out this spot. Today. I haven't kept a fluke in these waters all season. All right, well. Might not be a numbers day, but we've got some nice size and variety. It's been a while since I've gotten in some really nice flukes. Uh, we'll measure them, but it's 100% over 18 and a half. That much I know. Let's see. That fish, eh, he's not that big, but he's a solid 20, 20 incher. Too bad. Got a nice keeper fluke. 20 incher. Easy dinner fish. He'll be dinner tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, let's see if we can get another. That was a bit unexpected off that structure. All right, we got that fluke on a five inch Elias shad. We have it um, on a three quarter ounce jig head. We're in about 40 feet of water, working some very isolated structure. And uh, yeah, we've topped it off with some Procure Manhattan. So we're gonna try that again, see if there's any more fish. It definitely looks like there should be. Bum that we didn't get that fish on film, but whatever. Doesn't change that we got them. All right, let's see if we can get another. I don't think this spot will hold too, too many fluke, but it could. There's definitely a lot of life around it. Morning. Just got this 20 inch fluke. 
Yeah, I got a nice bass too, but obviously I let it go. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, first light, and then they just shut down. There. Yeah, let me just uh for dinner. Oh yeah. <laughs> Add them to the the, the list. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sweet, we'll measure them There's up real nothing quick. in there. Yeah, you wanna just grab that license? I like that little stringer thing. Yeah. Makes it easier for us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. been out uh since first light okay. Rock and roll. thank you let's see uh it's the ice i'll put him in there once he's bled out <laughs> sweet you're all set and roll. indeed sweet. all right awesome. nice said enjoy the rest of the day indeed happy labor day folks hey, don't work too hard too. i'm a teacher today's my last day before i have to uh -oh. So yeah, I just, <laughs> so I might, I might as well get it in one more time. <laughs> I won't be doing any more digging. Uh, yeah. All right. Take care, folks. You too. All right. So just got this fish checked out. Not a moment too soon. This is one of the reasons why I throw back 16 and a half inch sea bass because, you know, it's just very tough to tell, especially in a kayak when I'm trying not to fumble the fish and get finned. Um, it's just too risky. I don't want to pay a $100, $200 fine for a fish that might or might not be 100% legal. So it's a lot easier to deal with fluke, get them over the size limit. But uh, yeah, I'll see if they get this guy a buddy before we uh, hit up a new spot. Yeah, so uh, just building off of uh, that last clip, uh, the DEC checkpoint, very nice uh, officers. Uh, I did cut some of the footage in the middle, not because anything was wrong. Uh, I just didn't want my personal information that was on my licenses in clear view for the video. But yeah, those guys are just doing their job, you know, checking the fish. Uh, and, you know, I'm doing my part. I'm not keeping anything that is undersized. And you might think when you're in a kayak, you know, you can do whatever you want. But you are still subject to the regulations and you are expected to know them. Um, obviously, I'm fishing in New York in this video, but I'm not far from Connecticut. Just know that when you go fishing, especially if you're traveling, uh, the regulations might vary from, you know, state to state, even region from e region to region. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, do things by the book and you won't have any problems. Uh, one thing that they did comment on was my motor. Uh, obviously, this kayak, I have it registered with the state because anytime you have something motorized, even if it's a little kayak, even if it's a tiny little electric engine, you are still supposed to have it registered. So... You know, just know your the rules and regulations and you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, and obviously, you know, look into this as it does depend on where you are sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that aside, uh, after that whole encounter, I went over this area a couple more times uh, to see if there's any fluke around or hoping that the bluefish would eventually show up. They didn't. Uh, I then decided to go out quite a bit deeper and to jig as basically deep as I could in this neck of the woods in like 50 to 60 feet of water, just going to what seemed or appeared to be, you know, just spotty structure. Uh, there just wasn't really much on it on this particular day. It wasn't a great tide, uh, and the pieces of structure that I checked out just weren't as uh, prominent as I was hoping for. So after a while, I made my way back in shore and hit some of the more shallower water structure in 20 to 30 feet. Okay, I've been bopping around some deeper stuff for quite some time now and just investigating some areas that look rather fishy on the Navionics. Some of it looks better than others in practice, but uh, doesn't seem to be too much life out here. So I got like an hour and change maybe left to really fish. Two hours tops if I want to push the envelope. It's going to get really hot today. So I'm going to finish where I'm most confident, which is closer to shore now that the tide's moving again or should be moving. And let's see if we can uh, finish up with a few more fish. I'd love to see these bluefish show up, but I have seen no signs of them so far today. So perhaps later in the day, I don't know, but they're not out here. <laughs> All right, now that we got some moving tide, I can confidently fish this shallower stuff closer to shore. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, that's something nice. 
not a small fish. It's definitely not a fluke. Oh, what do we got here? Probably bass. Woo. I'm feeling parched. I think I'm gonna need a seltzer after this fish. What could that be? I think it's a bass. It's not a small one either. I don't think it's as big as the one this morning, but... <laughs> he just slammed it. I don't think it's a bluefish, but it might be. It's not nearly as big as that one this morning, but it's still a nice approaching slot fish. Alright, that's a nice little guy. Broad daylight fish, just for the sake of of record keeping. Almost slot, 27 incher. Nice. All right, well, we went back in shore and I guess it was the right move. I mean, no surprise, we got moving tide. But you know what time it is. It is time for our seltzer of the day and I have never tried this one. It's called Unicorn Tears. Mad tasty, apparently. Uh, this one contains CBD, so that is a, a new one for me. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna check this out. It's got some kind of scent to it, so. I don't know, it's kind of like peachy, maybe, maybe pear-like. It's hard to put your finger on what it is, but it, it's tasty. I don't know if it's mad tasty, but it's at least moderately tasty. So I give this one a round eight. Uh, and hopefully this is not the end of the video right now. So we're gonna try that again and see if we can get on some nice fish. Thanks for sticking it out this long. Let's try that again and see if we can get a better fish. Yeah, as I remarked, uh, it started to get really warm out not too long after that fish. And as you might've noticed, uh, I'm not really doing my typical fluke thing in this. I'm fishing a lot of non-gulp soft plastics, uh, Elias shads in particular, various different kinds. Uh, I just wonder, I really thought that the bluefish were going to show up this day, so for whatever reason, I just never really fully committed to going for fluke on this particular session, which maybe would have had a different outcome, but regardless, I fished for maybe like another 45 to 60 minutes after getting that bass, and then basically decided to make it in. I was fishing this area, I went a bit shallower, and everywhere in between, had a good tide, had a few like porgy-ish bites, maybe a few fluke hits, but nothing all that special so i decided to call it a day all right well i think that's going to do it for this last uh day of summer recess for me not a terrible way to go out uh, obviously we didn't get a ton of fish but honestly i wanted to try and explore a little bit um i wasn't really feeling like going all in for the fluke today you know i was hoping really hoping that the bluefish would show up but i guess i was uh, holding out for something that wasn't going to happen I'm sure they'll probably show up later in the day or maybe they're in a part of this that I haven't seen. I saw a few bursts here and there, but it was, wasn't really long lived and I wasn't really marking a lot of fish. Um, I probably, if I really wanted to hit the fluke up, could have really stuck closer to the inshore structure. That's kind of been the name of the game for me this season, uh, but I wanted to try and mix it up. I also wanted to try and mix it up and not just go exclusively for gulp. So we use the Elias products and they do a great job. Uh, I had a few porgy heads there there, but they didn't destroy any of my stuff, so that was pretty cool. Uh, didn't have to burn through any gulp. But yeah, not a, a bad day overall, especially that really nice bass to start things off in that fluke, which unfortunately we probably didn't get much footage of. Uh, but as we saw with uh, the game warden, you definitely want to make sure you're double checking and measuring those fish, because they will check you even if you're on a little kayak. So as I said, that's why I throw back the fish that are right on the line. It's, it's not worth it. Uh, but that's it for the summer recess. I'm definitely going to probably start limiting my videos down to one a week. Though I'm going to try and fish once, maybe twice a week after work on days when I, it lines up well. 
probably this area because it's the closest area to where I live, but on the weekends I'll venture a little further if the weather permits it. So thanks for those of you that are stuck with it the whole uh, season. I look forward to what the fall and uh, even the winter will bring. So that's going to do it for today. See you in the next one. Goodbye.